We'll see you, Scott. Good Thank morning. You. Thank, thanks for coming in. Uh, I just want to clarify that the reason uh, for this meeting discussed uh, some recent customer service issues that we've had with you and, and one that has resulted in a, in a complaint. What, what's up? Well, a couple weeks ago you were overheard uh, being kind of rude to some customers and being real strict about our procedures and uh, and then earlier this week we actually got a complaint where you were especially rude to, to a, a customer and uh, she never felt like you tried to resolve her problem and that you just uh, uh, kept just trying to uh, hold her too accountable to some procedures and weren't really focusing on her problem. So uh, Scott, you know we have higher customer service standards. Would you agree that could have been handled a little bit better to have resulted in a, in a more positive outcome for the customer? I suppose there are, I suppose that's right. So why don't you share with me one or two ways you might handle uh, this kind of an incident in the future? Well, as I think about it, and I remember, I remember the, the case, um, I, I recognized I wasn't listening, I was on task, I was trying to get things done. Um, I really didn't listen. I didn't hear what what the customer was bringing to me. Um, I just knew what needed to be done and, and, I, and I was trying to help her as quickly as I could. So I, I could work on my listening. So, so tell me what that would look like if you had a customer interaction. Tell me tell me how, how that would go. Well, certainly I, I wouldn't interrupt. Uh, I, I, my timing and trying to get things done has nothing to do with the customer's timing and me trying to get things done. She had, she had something to say, she had something to express. She had a challenge, she had a problem. And I don't think I listened to it fully. Uh, and that, I think now that I look back at it, that's probably important. Uh, cause maybe what I was coming up with might have fixed or helped part of her problem. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear the entire conversation. Well, certainly that's a good solution. Listening is probably 90% of, of uh, our ability to communicate with people to let them know that we're here to, to help them with their problems. Are there any other strategies you might use to, uh, to solve a customer's problem in, in a similar situation in the future that might result in a positive outcome? Well, certainly, and I think I, I, miss, I mentioned it briefly, uh, we're, we're tasked with getting a lot of things done. I, I'm all about it, I'm a driver. I know that's me, um, and I and I push. Uh, I'm on a timeline. I, I have things I want to do, and and I didn't allow the customer the appropriate amount of time. I, I need to reevaluate that. I need to look in the mirror and just recognize what what I'm about uh, that can sort of get in the way of our our customers. So. Obviously, the benefits of that would be giving the customer your time. Are there any drawbacks to, to spending that time to listen and spending that time to focus on that customer's problem? Is there any well, negative consequences there? When I think about it uh, fully, uh, the, you, I recognize we are customer-centric. We're all about the customer, and that's, the, that's what we're here to do. And, and when I shut them short on time because of my issues, um, the, the, the drawback there is I'm not, I'm not being customer centric. So that's really what we're about. My, my taking a look at myself, learning to listen better, um, I, there, there isn't a downside. I mean, we, if we slow down for whatever reason, it, there's certainly the right thing to do for the customer. Okay, well that, that's a good way of looking at it and I appreciate your focusing on, on spending that time at the expense of whatever else it, you're thinking that you have to do. Um, you seem to be focused on procedures and policies and, and holding the customer accountable for that. I, mean, I appreciate you not wanting to go in against our procedures, but at the same time, is there something, could there be a flaw in our procedures? Well, thank you for asking that. Uh, we, we are in such a pace that, that I haven't looked, and, and that's, that's wisdom. I mean, that, that's the right thing to do. When I have the opportunity to review and possibly revise, it's for the right reasons. Uh, we have the right scope, um, and I have not done that. Uh, so I, that is an, that's something I will absolutely look into. I'll, I'll take care of that. Are there any drawbacks to taking the time to do that? The drawback, I mean, I, I, it's personal. It's, it's me, I'm a driver. 
Uh, and so to take the time here, as I was having a problem with the customer here, what, what's that going to look like me, me in my production? Uh, but that's okay. I mean, I, I get that. I, sometimes we slow down to speed up. And uh, the faster I go, the farther behind I get. Um, and that's maybe where I am. So those are three or four good things that you and I have contributed to possible solutions, maybe a piece of each or whatever. Uh, which one kind of jumps out at you as possibly being the most impactful and most immediate? They're looking at yourself and, and practicing your listening skills or um, readjusting your time frames, uh, as you mentioned, with the other work that you have to do so you can do that, or the policy and procedure review. Which of those do you think would be absolutely the most immediate and most positive? Well, for me, I, I think the answer is yes. Um, and I know that's not really what you were looking for, but uh, all, of, all of those things have become obvious to me today. I should always look at myself. I have that listening skill uh, to get better, and, and that's like right away. But at the same time, to invest into the policy procedure review uh, and how that impacts the team, my leadership for the team, and what we're doing is, is paramount as well. So uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be doing all of those things. Well. All right. So when you get your next call, it's obviously the, the listening and, and being empathetic with the customer is going to jump, jump out. So um, when do you think you can get started on, on your action plan here in terms of being able to identify when that call could possibly go south and how you're going to turn that around? The answer is right away. And, and how will I know how I'm doing? It's going to be with the next customer. I'll be evaluating myself and pacing myself and seeing what that is and am I listening. Uh, it's a skill and, and I'm going to work on that skill. And so uh, over a period of whatever small amount of time, um, of course, we talk all the time, and, and I'll keep you up to speed on that'll be on my front burner. Okay. So I'll, I'll add maybe one more thought for you to think about once you have that encounter, and once we do follow up, because there will always be tougher customers than others. But it could be an opportunity to share that experience and how that was handled with your fellow employees, uh, and with your institutional knowledge and, and your. Um, and your experience here, it could be something that we could share in a training environment with others about how to handle those tough calls. So appreciate your immediate commitment. I do want to let you know that I will need to follow up. So if in the next week or so, I don't hear back from you saying, hey, I had a tough call, and even if it's just a mundane tough call and I'd like to share with you how it went, I'll probably come to you and follow, follow up with you so that we can follow up on that. I appreciate you, and, and I never mind myself being the lesson um, you know we we're all in it together okay. so all right well we've, we've talked about some good solutions we've talked about the incident I appreciate your willingness to look at it from that point of view Scott and um, I'll be looking forward to working with you in the future and also to seeing what you can do to help work with the team thank you all right we'll talk to you later <laughs>